Hi guys, welcome to my channel and my newest video. Thank you for clicking on it. I hope you all are well. Today is Thanksgiving and I wanted to share a devotion with everyone. Uh, this is called The Bright Side of Dark. If you could convey one message to the next generation, what would it be? What piece of invaluable advice would you pass on to them? Would it be financial, political, spiritual, or something else? In this passage, the prophet Joel urges parents to pass on to their children the stories he is about to tell them, to open up the details of their past, to tell what has happened to them, to reveal the hidden details that kids would never know. They're not pleasant stories, but they contain a valuable lesson. Obey Jehovah or endure the consequences. We are going to read Joel chapter 1 verses 1 through chapter 2 verse 27. Joel chapter 1. The word of Jehovah that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, you elders, and pay attention, all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days, or in the days of your forefathers? Tell about it to your sons, and let your sons tell about it to their sons, and their sons to the next generation. What was left by the devouring locust, the swarming locust is eaten. And what was left by the swarming locust, the unwinged locust is eaten. And what the unwinged locust has left, the voracious locust is eaten. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you wine drinkers, because the sweet wine has been taken from your mouths. For a nation has come up into my land, mighty and without number. Its teeth are the teeth of a lion, and its jaws are those of a lion. It has devastated my vine and turned my fig tree into a stump, stripping them completely bare and tossing them aside, leaving their twigs white. Well, as a virgin wearing sackcloth does for the bridegroom of her youth, grain offering and drink offering have ceased from the house of Jehovah. The priests, the ministers of Jehovah, are in mourning. The field has been devastated. The ground mourns, for the grain has been devastated, the new wine has dried up, the oil has failed. Farmers are dismayed, vine dressers wail because of the wheat and the barley, for the harvest of the field has perished. The vine has dried up, the fig tree has withered, the pomegranate, the palm, and the apple, all the trees of the field have dried up. For joy has turned to shame among the people. Put on sackcloth and mourn, you priests. Wail, you ministers of the altar. Come in and spend the night in sackcloth, you ministers of my God. For grain offering and drink offering have been withheld from the house of your God. Proclaim a fast. Call for a solemn assembly. Gather the elders together with all the inhabitants of the land to the house of Jehovah your God, and cry to Jehovah for help. Woe because of the day, for the day of Jehovah is near, and it will come like a destruction from the Almighty. Has not food been taken from before our very eyes, and rejoicing and joy from the house of our God? The seeds have shriveled under their shovels. Storehouses are desolate. Granaries have been torn down for the grain has dried up. Even the livestock groan. The herds of cattle wander in confusion, for they have no pasture, and the flocks of sheep bear the punishment. To you, O Jehovah, I will call, for fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and a flame has consumed all the trees of the field. Even the wild beasts long for you, 
because the streams of water have dried up, and fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Chapter 2 Blow a horn in Zion, shout a war cry in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Jehovah is coming. It is near. It is a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick gloom, like light of dawn spreading out on the mountains. There is a people numerous and mighty. Never before has there been one like it. And never again will there be another through the years of all generations. Ahead of it, a fire devours, and behind it, a flame consumes. The land ahead of it is like the Garden of Eden, but behind it is a desolate wilderness, and nothing can escape. Its appearance is like the appearance of horses, and they run like war horses. The sound is like that of chariots as they leap on the mountaintops, like the crackling of a blazing fire that consumes stubble. It is like a mighty people, drawn up in battle formation. Because of them, peoples will be in anguish. Every face will grow flushed. They charge like warriors. They scale a wall like soldiers. Each keeps to his own course. And they do not swerve from their paths. They do not shove one another. Each man advances in his course. If the weapons cause some to fall, the others do not break ranks. Into the city they rush. On the wall they run. Onto the houses they climb. Through the windows they enter like a thief. Before them the land trembles. And the heavens rock. Sun and moon have become dark and the stars have lost their brightness. Jehovah will raise his voice before his army, for his camp is very numerous, for the one carrying out his word is mighty, for the day of Jehovah is great and very awe-inspiring. Who can endure it? Yet even now, declares Jehovah, return to me with all your hearts, with fasting and weeping and wailing, Rip apart your hearts and not your garments and return to Jehovah your God. For he is compassionate and merciful, slow to anger and abundant in loyal love. And he will reconsider the calamity. Who knows whether he will turn back and reconsider and leave behind a blessing, a grain offering and a drink offering for Jehovah your God. Blow a horn in Zion. Proclaim a fast. Call for a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Collect the old men. Gather the children and nursing infants. Let the bridegroom go out from his inner chamber and the bride from her bridal chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of Jehovah, weep and say, Do feel pity, O Jehovah. For your people, do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, letting the nations rule over them. Why should the people say, where is their God? Then Jehovah will be zealous for his land and show compassion on his people. Jehovah will answer his people, here I am sending to you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be fully satisfied. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. I will drive the northerner far away from you. I will disperse him to a dry and desolate wasteland, with his vanguard toward the eastern sea and his rear guard toward the western sea. The foul smell from him will ascend. The stench from him will keep ascending, for he will do great things. Do not be afraid, O land. Be joyful and rejoice, for Jehovah will do great things. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness will become green, and the trees will bear fruit. The fig tree and the vine must give their full yield. You sons of Zion, be joyful and rejoice in Jehovah your God, 
for he will give you the autumn rain in the right amount, and he will send upon you a downpour, the autumn rain and the spring rain, as before. The threshing floors will be full of pure grain, and the presses will overflow with new wine and oil. And I will make compensation to you for the years that the swarming locusts, the unwinged locusts, the voracious locusts, and the devouring locusts have eaten my great army that I sent among you. You will surely eat to satisfaction, and you will praise the name of Jehovah your God, who has done wonders in your behalf. My people will never again be put to shame. And you will have to know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Jehovah your God. There is no other. My people will never again be put to shame. Okay. Jehovah urged the parents of Judah to tell their children all about the terrible events that Joel was about to describe. Jehovah wanted them to pass along the important lesson they learned through these horrible events. Is there any point in telling others about the downturns you've had because of bad choices? After all, some people think they have nothing to offer. They think that their mistakes have canceled out all the successes, leaving them nothing to share. But they're wrong. Jehovah can use people's wounds to heal others. The Apostle Paul, for example, wrote, These things happened to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us. That is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Give younger people your own testimony of Jehovah's truth. Disobeying Jehovah can bring pain and consequences, and you do them a world of good. Telling these stories can help others avoid your mistakes and duplicate your successes. Jehovah can use your wounds to heal others. Jehovah rebukes and lessons in you can help teach others, especially in the le if the lessons were painful or difficult to learn. Which is so very true. If you've gone through trials and and speed bumps along life, you know, you're going to want to tell other people about that because, especially people you care about, because you want to save them the same, you want to save them from the, the, the pain that you went through, you know, the, the angst. So you, you tell them what you went through in the hopes that they'll learn from your lessons and be more successful and not repeating those same lessons so that is the end of this devotion uh, i hope you all either are having a great thanksgiving or have had a great thanksgiving i hope you have a great morning afternoon or evening whenever and wherever you are watching this love and hugs bye guys <laughs>